After today's worship service, please join us for refreshments in the courtyard. Visit the Welcome and Information Center and meet some new friends. We would love to hear your questions, give you a tour of the building, or serve you a cup of coffee. In just a few moments, the ushers will pass out the welcome tablets. We want everyone to sign in today and let us know how we can best serve you. If you are joining us online, we want to hear from you as well. Look for the check-in information on the homepage of our website and let us know that you are joining us. Founders Metropolitan Community Church is a place of diversity and welcome, a place of healing and acceptance, a place of deep spirituality and transformation, a place of joy and love. Welcome to Founders Metropolitan Community Church, Los Angeles. Please join in our call to worship. God requires of us to act justly. This is what love looks like. God requires of us to love mercy. This is what love looks like. God requires of us to walk humbly with God. This is what love looks like. Why does this matter? Because only love can change the world. Please rise your able for our opening song.
Please be seated. A very special welcome to worship this morning, especially for those who may be worshiping with us for the first time. If we have any first-time visitors, uh, please uh, let us know so that we can say hello. We also have some information and a small little gift. Um, so if you are a first-time visitor, please uh, uh, let us know. It looks like we are all family today, so uh, welcome to worship here. I would like to give a very special welcome to those who are online this morning. It is always a joy to know that as we come together as a community of faith in spirit, that we are also joined by people literally around the world, and we are especially blessed on this Sunday that you have chosen to uh, worship with us. So wherever you are in the world, we thank you for being with us. We do encourage you at some point during the broadcast to scroll down to the bottom of your screen. There's a place where you can share some information, your thoughts about worship, as well as if there are any prayer requests that we may hold up so that we can support you spiritually throughout the week, wherever you are in your life, spiritual or physical journey this morning. Welcome to worship at Founders Metropolitan Community Church, and welcome to community. Um, this is a really special and a very, very important day that we actually come together as community. Um, several of us in the sanctuary are wearing safety pins. It is a reminder. Um, it comes to us from our friends from the UK um, who, following the vote for Brexit, um, they started wearing safety pins as a reminder that we are still all stitched and connected together, though the fabric may be torn and sometimes a little worn, and sometimes it feels like it's just being torn apart at the seams. We are still family and community in one society together. And so um, our, our ushers have some safety pins, and so if you didn't get one, and if you would like one, um, they're just going to come down the aisles, just raise your hand, and they'll, they'll just pass those along um, so that you can get one. We do encourage you to um, wear those. Um, we are going to be addressing um, just the variety of challenges that we face at this time um, in community, in our society, and in our nation. Um, but for now, I would like to give you a very special welcome to worship today. I am overjoyed, and I do encourage you um, at some point during worship, maybe during communion or following worship, if you haven't done so, to take a look at the um, artwork that is on the back wall. That is the result of the conversations that were had at all three of our worship services last Sunday, where everybody gathered during worship to consider what are our core values, what are those essential values that we hold, that hold us together as community. And wow, I can't think of a, a more timely activity or more timely exercise that that happened on Sunday. And so I really do encourage you to take a look at that because if you want the spirit of hope, just look at the words and the patterns that hold us together. It is really remarkable today. And so in that spirit of joy, I encourage you to rise as you're able to greet those who are with you, to let them know that they're in the right place today. Um, if you need a hug or they need a hug, Feel free to ask somebody if you can hug them this morning. Oops. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Please rise as you are able for the reading of the scripture. Our reading today is from Isaiah, Isaiah, chapter 55, beginning at the ninth verse. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my <coughs> ways above your ways and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain, the snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the sower and bread for the food, so will my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will carry out my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. Hear what the Spirit says today. Thanks be to God. Amen. God 
God in the Please be seated. If love is the answer, and sometimes as we gather and sometimes as we experience the world, I think that even becomes the question whether or not love is the answer. But if love is the answer, the question we ask is why? Why is love the answer? Why? And I think on a day like today, on this particular Sunday, at this point in our nation's history, in the history of our community, in the history of society, in the history of what it means to be this people in this place at this time, there are an awful lot more questions that we are asking, more questions than just why. We're asking how. How could this happen? How could this be? We're asking what? What's next? We're asking who and when and where does this all begin? I will tell you that on Thursday evening as Toby and I gathered for dinner and the TV was on and as Florida moved and it became clear the direction that things were going in. I sat there across the table and I said, Toby, I don't know how to live in a world where there's a President Trump. That's not about politics. That's not about party. And that's not about personality. I know that for everyone who voted for Donald Trump, there's another person who voted for Hillary Clinton. Actually, there are about 300,000 people more who voted for Hillary Clinton. We are a nation divided. Within this space, within this community, there may be people who voted one way or the other. But the reality for me was knowing the rhetoric of fear, knowing the hurtful language, the number of individuals, the kinds of people who had been called out to stoke the fires, to stoke the fear. I was frightened. How do we continue to be a community, the home of the free, the land of the brave? How do we continue to honor those words? We're all a creative equal. And how do we, as people of faith, respond faithfully and spiritually in a love which is more than silent acquiescence. I believe in unity, and I want to believe in the words of President Obama when he asks everybody to give a chance. But the challenge I have is that when I often give people the benefit of the doubt and give them a chance, I want to take them at their word. And the challenge that I had on that evening, sitting across the dinner table from my spouse, my partner of 16 years, my spouse of 10 years, was that it was those words that caused me terror and fear and sadness.
What I do also believe, though, that there is a reason why this community exists. There is a reason why our story is a story of a community that has survived challenge after challenge after challenge. Yeah. There is a reason why when the fire burned down the building, we built a stronger community based on a solid foundation. There is a reason why when people lost hope in the middle of the plague that decimated our numbers in our communities, we still found the courage to have a hope even when there seemed to be no hope. We had the courage to provide a message of peace and a message of love even when the world was not being peaceful or very loving. We have a role and we have a story and I believe that those 48 years have been preparation for just a time as this. I have spent hours and hours and hours in conversation with different groups and different communities and different individuals. I have shared messages on Facebook with people from around the nation and around the world who are struggling to try to find a way forward, to try to find a way to live within this new reality. There are those who ridicule those who protest. There are those who fear those who raise up their voices. But at this time, I think we need to protest from a point of love, from a place of spirituality. The love that we talk about, the reason why love is the answer is because the love that God calls us to love is a love that has power. It is a love that calls forth justice. It is a love that bends power towards justice, and it is a power that empowers each of us to use our loving presence so that our love is more than just platitudes or words. Right. We've been moving through this series, a generous revolution. It is a call for us to be love, but not that little kumbaya kind of love where we all just gather and hold hands and everything is all right. It is the love that calls each of us to account. It is the kind of love that calls us to use our presence to do what God does always, to create the conditions where life may thrive, to create the conditions where all people, no matter what they worship or who they worship or what language they speak or the color of their skin or what zip code they are in, that they have the opportunity in order to fully realize the gifts and the life and who they truly are. This is the message of this community. It is why for 48 years we have defied all of the powers of fear that threaten to silence us. It is why we've refused time and time again to just quietly go back into the closet. I don't know what you're feeling this morning. I've spoken to people who genuinely are feeling terrified and feeling fearful and feeling worried and sad and depressed. I have ta talked to a few who are absolutely delighted by the results. No matter where we are on that equation, we need to honor those feelings that we are feeling inside. We need to understand that part of what we're experiencing is grief. It is grief of a myth that never existed. We are grieving the myth that we can all just hold hands and get along. We are grieving the myth that in this great society, with all of its diversity, that as we talk about the melting pot, that somehow what we forgot is that to be part of that melting pot our individual diversity, the things that strengthen us, somehow get lost and set aside. I believe that our call is to be this kind of love. I believe at this time, more than any other time, our call is to be the community that goes deep that calls society to be loving and to be just, no matter what color the party in power may be. So let me give you a few words of why 
I still have hope. You see, the prophet Isaiah lays it out pretty plainly. My ways are not your ways, says God. My ways are not your ways. If ever I found comfort in those words, I find comfort in them right now. The kind of love that God is talking about is the love that calls us into community, that calls us to be with one another, that calls us to affirm each other wherever we are on our life or our spiritual journey, to recognize each person as being the authors and having the authority of their own life, of using our power in order to create the conditions where all life can thrive. When God gives us power, God gives us the power in order for us to use our presence in order to be blessed in blessing others. It is consistent throughout the scriptures, all the way back to the book of Genesis, on through the book of Revelation. The traditions and the stories that we have inherited are those where we are always called to love kindness to do justice, and to walk humbly with our God. We are called to raise up those who are identified as the foreigner, for the widow, for the orphan, for the people who are most marginalized in society, time and time and time again. This is God's message to us. This is the story that we have inherited. It is the story that we have lived within our own lives. When fear enters in and we lose our way, that is when power becomes something other. And we start to use our power to create fearful others of another. Our work now is to be the voice of hope, to give courage to all who feel disheartened, to heal the rifts, and to work vigorously to prevent rhetoric from becoming reality. Right. Now is the time for us to be the community that God has called us to be, to live out all of those core values, for us to receive the legacy of our 48 years and understand that that has been preparation for us to do the most amazing thing. The way I summarize and I understand our spirituality is that in the beginning, God makes space for life to thrive. God holds back the forces that threaten, allows for difference. God blesses everyone and everything and then gives us power to be the author's own stories. This is what God is. This is how God acts. And this is what it means for each of us to be created within the image of the God who is love. Narcissism. Control. Containment. Fear, that is not the kind of love that God is calling us to love. It is not the kind of power that God is calling us to use. And the thing that I understand most profoundly about the power that is in love is that love will always stand against any powers, any forces, any systems, any individual or person or community or society that stands in the way of love. If we are going to protest, let us protest from a spiritually grounded place. Let us model what nonviolent resistance looks like. Let us raise up the voices. Let us live open to the possibility that we can be the kind of community, but let us not go silent when we see the policies and the appointees who are moving in a direction that indicates that things will go otherwise. This is the hope of our story. This is what our prophetic history tells us. And so I want you to join me in this understanding that the last 48 years truly were this time of preparation. I want you to join me in preparing ourselves individually and collectively so that we can truly be this body who brings love alive. What I understand about the story is that every time God has blessed the people of God, got us out of trouble, things started to go really, really well, 
and then we lost our way. Whenever we don't depend upon God, whenever we don't follow this ethic of how we actually need to be community together, when we privilege our individual fears and our individual priorities at the expense of others, things go sideways. It is when we return to God, the God who is love, this ethic that is the call to be love, that we once again begin to thrive. I believe that we've been made for just such a time as this. I believe that each of us need to become more self-aware, that we need to get in touch and own and honor our feelings, that we need to do whatever work that we need to do, that this community can be strengthened once more, that we practice love by loving each other, that we start to just do random acts of kindness, if you're feeling down and you're feeling distraught and you're feeling fearful, there is scientific evidence, believe it or not, that just smiling at a stranger or doing a random act of kindness will actually make you feel better, will make you feel more empowered, will remind you that no matter what life is throwing at you, you still have the power to author your own life. We need to reground ourselves spiritually. If you're not taking Creating a Life That Matters, I encourage you to do that. We're going to be offering more programming so that we can actually do advocacy and justice work from a spiritually centered place. And I encourage you to come forward and to participate in that. I encourage you to find one spiritual practice that connects you deeply to yourself and to that which is greater than you are. Because in this time, we each need to be doing the work to fill and refill our souls very deeply. We need to practice grace and we need to model forgiveness. That one can be really hard. We have a whole community right here where we can practice it. If ever there were a reason to heal whatever rifts continue to taunt us, now's the time. That internal stuff can no longer distract us from the bigger project that is at hand. God always acts in ways that are vulnerable. God always acts in ways that welcomes people home. And whatever term that you may have used to define justice, understand this. The justice that God is seeking always allows for the possibility of reconciliation, of forgiveness, of grace. It means accountability. It means taking responsibility for the ways that we've acted and we've acted unlovingly. But it always calls us to grace and communion with one another. That's what I believe that table is all about. I believe that a simple thing that you can do is write a letter. Write a letter to your editor. Write a letter to your senator. Write a letter to the senators in states where the parties may not be as favorable. Remind them that if we are going to be this kind of country that everybody wants us to be, that it means that we need to be a community and have a government and have policies and systems that represent all people who call this country home whether or not they are documented and have the legal papers, whether or not they happen to practice a certain religion, whether or not they happen to vote for a particular person who is now going to become the president, it doesn't matter. We all need to be in this together, and if we are going to be in this together, then it means that we need to hold our legislature and we need to hold the government that is coming into power accountable so that the way may be prepared for hope and for love and for justice into the future. I tell you, I tell you this, no matter what you may feel, remember God is the God of love and every one of us has been created in the image of that God. Every one of us has the capacity for love. God's word, Isaiah says, has purpose and that purpose is love. God's word, Isaiah says, is sent out to be a seed. It is a seed of hope that creates dreams. God's word, Isaiah says, always nourishes life so that it has the sustenance in order to thrive, not just survive. That's the call for us to be this kind of community in this place, in this time. But it can only happen if we do this and we do this together. May God bless us on this journey. Amen.
be seated. Here I am. May that be our prayer. For those of you who have joined us online, now would be a great time if you would gather up whatever elements that you want to use for communion. That as we consecrate and we celebrate communion this morning, that we truly may feel the connected power of God's Holy Spirit drawing us together like God has not gathered us together in a long, long time. Wherever you are, physically on your journey or spiritually or on your life journey, we are one community brought together in this one hope of this one God who is love. So gather those elements up that in a few moments we may take this meal and be spiritually fed once more together. Next Sunday, we are blessed. We are blessed because the new interim moderator, uh, interim moderator of the Metropolitan Community Churches is going to be with us, Reverend Rochelle Brown. She is going to preach at all three worship services. On Saturday the 19th, she is also creating a listening session that will be taking place on Saturday afternoon. It'll be taking place downstairs in our fellowship hall, and so all are invited to come and to share their thoughts about the future and your hope for the denomination as well as for this congregation. She really wants to sit and she wants to listen on Saturday to all of your voices and all of your hopes. And then on Sunday, she is going to preach a message to inspire us all on this most important and profound movement. During next Sunday's worship service, it is November 20th, and we are going to commemorate all of the lives that have been lost because of the gender identity and gender expression as we commemorate Transgender Day of Remembrance. We are going to be making space and making room to hear brief snippets of some of our own community's stories, and we will read the names and snuff out the candles for each of those individuals who have been lost. And so we're going to do that at all three of our worship services. Reverend Rochelle is going to preach at all three of our worship services. We encourage you to come out to invite others so that we can participate both in listening to this message of hope from our new interim moderator, as well as to stand and be present with those in our transgender community. In some of the conversations that I've been having and some of the phone calls that I've been having, I have been updated about some of the things that we can rest more comfortably about in some of the areas and some of the individuals who we need to be most vigilant and concerned for. For those of you who have entered into marriage with individuals of people who identify as the same gender or the same sex as you, the good news on that front is because of the ruling in the Supreme Court, it is believed that that is going to be very, very difficult doesn't mean that efforts won't happen in order to try to disband it, but it is going to be profoundly difficult in a long time before any movement can truly happen in that manner. That's the good news. We don't know what's going to happen with health care. We certainly don't know what's going to happen with all of the rhetoric for those who identify as Muslims. We don't know what's going to happen to those in our community and our families who identify as undocumented. And we certainly don't know what's going to happen to the protections, what little protections our transgender brothers and sisters currently have from the health code and in other aspects of life. We don't know what's going to happen to those. And so now is the time for us to build strength in one another, for us to do the work so that we are prepared to be the spiritual advocates that God needs us to be. As we have more information about all of this, we are going to be posting it on our Facebook page and up on our website so that people are informed. If you have connections in the community, I encourage you to forward them our way so that we can use whatever knowledge that we have so that we can be this wonderful, powerful community together. There are lots of other things that are happening in our life of community, and I do encourage you to take a look at the newsletter. It does double as 
um, your worship bulletin, which does double as your newsletter. Um, most importantly and most urgently is that, sun that this Sunday, following our 11 o'clock service and before our 1 o'clock, 1.30 service, we have um, our quarterly um, newcomers brunch. And that's an opportunity, especially for those who are relatively new to the community, uh, to come in and to just meet and greet. Um, it is open to everybody. We encourage everybody to come to brunch, um, in part because we want to be community and we want to introduce newcomers to others. Um, various leaders from various teams in ministry are going to be present. They'll give brief um, introductions to what they're, what, what's actually happening in their ministries and how people can get involved. And so whether you've been coming here for 48 years or whether you've been coming here for 48 minutes, we encourage you. <laughs> We encourage you to stop on by um, so that we may be community together. I really believe that it is important that we are community not just in and at worship, but after worship as well. I am ever grateful, ever grateful for the team that has come together to make this part of their ministry. Um, back in June, we had an incredible, 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 wonderful newcomers brunch. Um, we are planning a new one um, this afternoon. There are people who are already down in the kitchen who are already making that way um, available. We will have coffee and snacks after the 9 o'clock service as well, um, but we encourage you to stop back by um, after the 1130 service to get us kicked off. Um, Adrian, Adrian Christian Wilson, um, who many of you know, is actually going to be singing a message during our offering. He is giving this offering. Um, he has, in many ways, been the catalyst to get this newcomer's uh, brunch off the ground, but more than that, he also gathered together the people who were serving hospitality in the 9 o'clock, the 11 o'clock, and the 1.30 service, brought them together so that they now understand themselves and see themselves as one ministry, one team working together. It is a profound vision and a profound opportunity, and he's been very, very clear. He's like, I don't want to leave this. I just want to help make it happen. <laughs> and so... You know, so for me, what Adrian has been is, 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 is exactly the model of what we all can be. He's been a catalyst for community. He's been a catalyst to gather people together who have similar passions, to help them work through all of the challenges that we have had so that we can truly be more together. It is what we can do in every aspect of our ministry. Wherever you may be, whatever you're thinking about, if you've got a passion, let's figure out how we connect you to others who have similar passions. With that, I invite Adrian to kind of come on up. I invite the ushers to come forward. I do encourage you to give as you are able so that we have the resources that we need to be this community that we urgently need to be so that we can go forward and change this world for good together. All-consuming fire, you're my heart's desire, and I love you dearly, dearly, Lord. You're my meditation.
standing as you're able. Gracious God, in the debris litter of the world, you clear a place where we can plant your justice, which can bring hope to the oppressed, your righteousness, which can receive even our enemies in peace. Jesus Christ, you break up the story ground of our hearts so grace might be planted you take us by the hand to lead us through the waters of baptism so we can be strengthened to bring dominion into this world. Holy Spirit, you are with us every day, leading us to where we are able to serve that day. If you would only listen, if we would listen, guide us to truly open our hearts to love so that we may bring the answers as well as the questions to those places in our world that so need your healing presence. God and community, holy in one, hear us as we join in singing the prayer Jesus has taught us as to we pray.
if love is the answer, then what are the questions that we must ask ourselves today as we turn our hearts to reconciliation? Who are the people we have not yet responded to with love? What are the parts of our very self we have not truly loved and embraced? Where are those places that we need to bring love? Why were we called here today? Let us go together with these questions in a moment of silence with our God. We may not always find answers to the questions we bring before God, but what we always find is love if we truly open our hearts to it. Let us do so today and with courageous hearts filled with love, go forth into a hurting world. Join me in the great prayer of thanksgiving. God dwells in you. And also in you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, for by water and by the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Christ. Therefore, we join with you, all those, all those throughout the ages, lifting up our voices in unending praise of your steadfast love. calls us to the table today. This table is for those who thirst for the compassion and hunger for peace. We come to this table to eat and drink so that we may gain the strength to go forth to change the world. And we remember on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he shared a meal with his friends and he took the loaf and he broke it and he gave thanks for it. And saying, take, eat, this is the body that I share with you. Remember me, and whenever you eat this, you offer yourselves into the world. After the supper, Jesus took the cup. When he had blessed it, he gave it to them and gave it saying, drink, all of you, this is my blood, my life, which brings forth a covenant of forgiveness that I share with you and with all. Remember me whenever you drink and forgive. In our hearts, God, write the vision of a community that we will live here on earth, pouring the spirit of life and grace through these gifts of bread and the cup as we feed by this bread of life, give us an understanding so that we might hear those who are crying out for hope. As we are nourished by this cup of peace, may we go to all who are surrounded by oppression, bringing justice to every place where it has never prevailed, showing them that what love looks like. In the name of the Christ we serve, amen. amen. In order to prepare for the serving of this feast, I ask that the ushers, the acolytes, and the servers come forward at this time. We want those of you who are our guests today to know that here at Founders, as well as all other MCCs around the world, we celebrate an open communion. You do not need to be a member of this church or any church to receive communion here. 
You are welcome, just as you are. The ushers will guide you to come forward for communion, the gifts of God for the people of God. Amen.
friends, two important announcements before we do our final blessing. One, um, Adrian has let me know that he has um, a gift. He has t-shirts and he has CDs for everybody. It is one of the ways that he wants to bless this congregation and bless the community. And so he encouraged you to stop by. He's got a table set up in the courtyard. Um, stop by after our closing song so that you can thank him for the gift that he's given. Um, and you can also receive um, the gift of a CD and a t-shirt um, free to you just for being in this community and to share his token of appreciation for allowing him to share his love. Later this afternoon, later this afternoon, we are going to be blessed because right here in this space, beginning at 530, um, our friends from Muslims for Progressive Values are going to be holding a forum. It is a very timely forum. They've got three or four different speakers. They've got some authors. And the forum is entitled, Ask a Muslim Anything. <laughs> I think we all have questions to ask on this day. So I do invite you to stop on by. If you can't make it back for brunch, do come back at 5.30 um, when we are actually going to stand with and join with our friend from Muslims from Progressive Values. Um, and just before that, I'm actually meeting with them and some members of, of some of the Jewish congregations so that we can actually start to put together a plan for how the three of our congregations can work together to be this kind of spiritually grounded movement that is a movement of hope and a movement of love that models the way that we are called to be. As we go out into the world, may you know and may you always remember that wherever you are, whatever you are feeling, that God is there with you. God is the God of love. The greatest gift that we've been given is the gift of love, and that love is with you always. May that love give you the courage to smile at a stranger, to open up a door for somebody that you don't know, to somehow, in some way, make love real in the now of our action. I now encourage you to rise as you're able, and let us join in our closing song.
Thank you for joining us today. By participating with us online, you are an extension of this church's membership ministry. Wherever you are in the world, we are so excited to embrace you, to hear from you, and to pray for you. Please connect with us and interact with us by telephone, email, or social media. Be an angel amongst us by supporting this ministry through our donation link. With your help, we expand and reach a greater number of people with God's love through this ministry. We invite you to write to us so we can be in prayer and praise with you. You are a part of Founders Metropolitan Community Church. Email us directly, info at mccla.org. May God bless you.